Hello, this is a precision thermometer for cryogenic applications, Lakeshore model 370. So I just received it. Shiny and white instrument with the beautiful uh, vacuum fluorescent display. So we can see there are usual mains input, GPAB interface, uh, relays for alarms, analog output, analog output 2, heater output, monitor, reference, scanner control, there is uh, RS232 interface. And for the probe, there is the, these two connectors, each of them four wire. So this is a voltage, this is a current, and they also have a separate ground terminals. So essentially it's an eight wire interface. So we will, this instrument was bought as uh, used, so it's supposed to be working. Okay, let's power on the meter. Okay, very nice and bright display. And some relays click. And here we are. Let's see some, I never used this meter before. So I'm really not familiar with its controls and settings. We can select resistance ranges. Voltage for uh, excitation. It can go really low voltages like 20 microvolts for example right now. And it also shows, shows real power that would be used by uh, a sensor. So we can estimate what's the heating, self-heating effects, stuff like that. And scanner control, there is no scanner, so it's just beeps. And we can set, let's see, input setup. So there are some pass settings. Okay. Display setup. Select with buttons. Uh, it's probably here. Number of locations. I believe this is uh, sure to show how many sensors you want to show. Yep. Uh, computer interface. What else? Instrument setup. Let's go over instrument setup. So this is the scanning frequency. This is uh, AC resistance measurement uh, instrument. So it uh, uses AC signal to uh, control and measure. So there are frequency 9.8 hertz, 16.2 and 13.7 hertz. Command mode reduction mode, off on or on, guard drive, monitor output, different settings. It will take me some time to learn uh, all of this stuff. Uh, heater range. It allows you to control the heater, how many milliwatts, watts. And uh, the main, main uh, purpose why you would buy this instrument is cryogenic applications. So it's able to measure temperatures as low as 50 millikelvin. So uh, very, very close to absolute zero. And this is uh, extremely useful and important if uh, application requires temperatures uh, below like four kelvins for some physics uh, experiments, superconductors, uh, various uh, new sensors, quantum electronics. 
all the exciting stuff like that. All right, let's turn it off and take it apart. All right, so I believe we'll just need to move a couple screws from uh, covers. I do see also screws uh, from the side. These are Allen key, so let me find the proper key. construction we can see that this uh, display is manufactured by uh, Noritake uh, Itron very famous uh, company for this this kind of displays we have custom keyboard uh, PCB some ribbon cables between them and also Seems like this is the cable for the, all the key keypads. A bunch of relays in there. Let's take a closer look. So here we are uh, on the top of the meter. We can see huge uh, main board, essentially single PCB for the, all the digital analog, everything. So we have the main transformer right over here. We have just mains uh, from the uh, power input. And then we have some DC rails coming to the smaller transformer here. This is kind of uh, interesting design, but kind of expected because we will need uh, isolated analog uh, uh, input. Uh, power input for all the uh, circuitry for measurements and uh, current generation for sensor and also we'll have a separate digital power supply for all the uh, digital uh, controller uh, gpab interface uh, probably relay outputs stuff like that let me remove this uh, big bar which blocks the view for us. I like how uh, Lakeshore designed the instrument uh, case. It's essentially very serviceable. You have the access for everything and there is no fan. This is a passive instrument. Doesn't take much power. Now we can disconnect the uh, transformer cables. And move it away. So the transformer is, uh, have custom part number. You cannot probably see because of the lights, but it's 109-370-4801-207. Two zero seven seven zero two R nine C. That's the custom transformer part number. And now just hang it right there, so we can take a closer look on the circuitry. So we have the all the digital stuff right over there. We have. Uh, it's a national instruments chip that is the uh, GPAB interface controller, Dallas DS1245 uh, non volatile SRAM with the battery inside of it, firmware. And this is processor, I believe. Yeah, DS18C320. I think this is TMS320 uh, variant, probably. Some uh, discrete logic stuff. 
there is a jumper, a test or run, and socketed actually CPU, Dallas and VRAM and firmware chip, they all socketed, so that is very nice. There is there also a beeper. And for the power supply, we have bridge rectifier, some big capacitors, some uh, linear regulators on the heat sinks. And yeah, power supplies looks pretty common, standard. Nothing very special about it. We have some isolation optocouplers here, these white deep uh, chips there. And yeah, I believe like there is a silk screen line all over the board that goes like through here. So this is essentially all the earth references logic and this is all floating analog stuff. Okay. To check in uh, better details, uh, I'll use my macro lens. We will start from uh, uh, analog side uh, power. We'll look at that. There is a big chip with the label on it. It says 113.593 M370F-HEX. I believe this is probably microcontroller with the firmware on it, like 8051 or something like that. Regulators are 7915, 7805 and 7815. So this is plus minus 15 volts and plus 5 volts output. Capacitors are nice Nichicon uh, brand. 2700 uh, microfarad, 35 volts. Uh, let's see what we have next. Some film capacitors, a lot of test points around stuff. Uh, this chip in the socket is H Interseal H1719-1. Uh, IPZ. Uh, it could be an ADC. Yeah, there is the test point, AD in. I believe this is ADC. Some interesting looking capacitors next to it. This is the Crystal X3. And let's see what's around it. This chip is LTC 1050. Some uh, switching marks, Maxim DG508. Then there is AMP03. AD780. Uh, this looks like a voltage reference. So there is no LM399 in this instrument. There is minus 2.5 ref test point. This is TL082. So what else do we have here? Bunch, this is two op amps, so OP1177. Another amp03, two pieces of them. On the other side, we have, uh, I believe this is a generator uh, section. So this is LTC 8043. Uh, there is some discrete logic, like 74HCT 237. Uh, then there is another OPA 177. This is Fairchild chip HL2035 with a crystal next to it. Max, Maxim DG508, uh, two of them. And there are four, four Kadok networks. These are, let's see, this is 1776. And I'm not sure they're all the same. 1776. Yeah, they look like to be the same networks, um, four of them. And they have uh, relays in between, DS2, VS, DC, 5 volts. These are, these are non latching relays. And what else we have here? There is test point at 10 OSC. So there's probably like oscillator uh, circuitry in here. 
and then we can see the front end so this is the current output this is the voltage input for sense so here we have a couple more relays couple film capacitors a couple chips on uh, uh, on pin on pin sockets yeah they are without the black housing like you see in here on in here so probably like they were trying to avoid the leakage through the plastic uh, casing so there are just standing collet pins and these are OPA 602 602 OPA 602 right in the corner some amp 03s OP27 so a bunch of analog stuff another switch 508 INA 106 uh, uh, I believe this could be an instrumentation amplifier because remember this instrument can measure like microvolts so there is fairly low noise section of this uh, input uh, amplification required and over to the right we have another bunch of logic chips uh, actually this look this is a resistor network lm339 508 switch 74 logic op27 and a couple more of the resistor networks and 339's comparators and the big device on this uh, heatsink is LT1010 this is a high power buffer and there are actually a couple more of LT1010's on the heatsinks by the right side so these are also 1010 buffers and there is blown chip this is ad6 it's hard to see it's 650 or 660 660 uh, have they have a out a out one a out two I believe these are for analog output, probably DAX. Uh, has some ins insulation. There is AD1861 and also date code 2005, uh, week 49. A uh, bunch of PTF resistors in here. And these two heat sinks have 7915 and 7815 devices. These are plus minus 15 volt power for all this section. And just to for uh, completeness, we can take a look on the digital section. So there is the Dallas firmware logic uh, GPAB chip and CPU down there. Overall, very nice.